First of all, log into your Linux VPS using the Bitvise SSH client. Begin by running the following commands as a non-root user to update your package listings and install Squid Proxy. Squid will automatically set up a background service and start after being installed. You can check that the service is running properly. By default, Squid does not allow any clients to connect to it from outside of this server. To enable that, you'll need to make some changes to its configuration file. Be advised that Squid's default configuration file is very, very long, and contains a massive number of options that have been temporarily disabled by putting a hash at the start of the line they're on, also called being commented out. You will most likely want to search through the file to find the lines you want to edit. In Nano, this is done by pressing Ctrl W, entering your search term, pressing Enter, and then repeatedly pressing Alt W to find the next instance of that term if needed. Begin by navigating to the line containing the phrase HTTP underscore access denial. You should see a block of text explaining Squid's default access rules. From this, you can see the current behavior localhost is allowed, other connections are not. Note that these rules are parsed sequentially, so it's a good idea to keep the deny all rule at the bottom of this configuration block. You could change that rule to allow all, enabling anyone to connect to your proxy server, but you probably don't want to do that. Instead, you can add a line above HTTP underscore access allow localhost that includes your IP address, like so. ACL means an access control list, a common term for permissions policies. Localnet in this case is the name of your ACL. SRC is where the request would originate from under this ACL, your IP address. After making that change, save and close the file. If you are using Nano, press Ctrl X, and then when prompted, Y and then Enter. At this point, you could restart Squid and connect to it, but there's more you can do to secure it first. Squid allows you to create username password pairs using built-in Linux functionality, as an additional or an alternative step to restricting access to your proxy by IP address. To do that, you'll create a file called slash etc slash squid slash passwords and point squid's configuration to it. First, you'll need to install some utilities from the Apache project to access a password generator that Squid likes. Squid's usernames won't overlap with system usernames, so you can use the same name you've logged in with if you want. You'll be prompted to add a password as well. This will store your username along with the hash of your new password in slash etc slash squid slash passwords, which will be used as an authentication source by Squid. You can cat the file afterward to see what that looks like. After verifying that your username and password have been stored, you can update Squid's configuration to use your new slash etc slash squid slash passwords file. Continue navigating to the line containing the phrase HTTP underscore access denial. Using Nano and reopen the Squid configuration file and add the following highlighted lines. These additional directives tell Squid to check in your new passwords file for password hashes that can be parsed using the basic NCSA auth mechanism and to require authentication for access to your proxy. After that, you can finally restart Squid with your configuration changes. This might take a moment to complete. And don't forget to open port 3128 in your firewall if you're using UFW. You'll be using curl on your local machine to demonstrate your squid server. It's installed by default on all modern Windows, Mac, and Linux environments, so you can open any local shell to run this command. 
the X argument passes a proxy server to curl, and in this case, you're using the HTTP protocol, specifying your username and password to this server, and then connecting to a known working website like google.com. If the command was successful, you should see the following output. You can configure the proxy on the browser according to the instruction in the link we put in the right corner. And finally, you can check the working of the proxy at the following website.